Hey guys, Glader here, bringing you another update on the Pokemon Go Unity 3D version for desktop, which connects to the official Nymantic Pokemon Go servers. I've added a couple of features, and I'm going to show you those in a minute, but first I'd like to announce to anyone who was trying to check out my GitHub the past day-ish, uh, my profile was unlisted, and it wasn't my choice, it was GitHub's choice, but I've been unsuspended and so that you'll be able to check out the source for this project and the API projects, both the Unity and the regular Net35 API, you know, right after this video. I'm going to push up any changes that I've made right after I record this so you have access to this. So what, have I, what do I really have for you today? Well, let's get into it right now. I've actually added some features. So we're going to start to see the emergence of the actual game. Now there's not much, so don't expect much. I'm still working on some network issues, some issues with the async code that I wrote, and I also encountered some issues with, uh, which is how I wanted to design some of the some of the requests going being sent out and how I wanted to handle the responses, at least for the UI stuff. I sort of have a uh, I sort of have a design fleshed out for that now. I don't know if it's good, but it works. So let me just go ahead and show you what's there. There's not much. I mean, you guys remember this. Go ahead and log in. And then maybe I'll jump into the code for anybody who's interested in using this project. You might want some direction on uh, exactly what components to be using. So, we've got the loading screen. And as requests come in that we need to send, oh, that, that's not right. 21? I don't think so. Oh, it is. I forgot. Oops. Yeah, this account's 21 now. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so anyway, yeah. And it's almost ready to level up. So I've added a, we can pull down the profile. That's one request. You have to pull down the inventory to get the level. Very odd design, but player stats is like, it's an object inside the inventory for some reason. So you have to send an inventory request, and so you get that down. And now I've got, you know, this basic UI. There's a button here. It doesn't do anything yet. You've got the nearby Pokemon over here to the right. You've got your avatar portrait, as well as the experience bar, which, because I'm so close to a level, it doesn't really show you... But it works like this. It's functional. I tested it. And so yeah, that's about it. Just a couple requests. I had to get some bugs internally fleshed out, fixed, and I had to figure out how I wanted to design some of this stuff. So I guess I'll step into the design a tiny bit, show you what's going on here. Now my idea was create a... It's here somewhere. I get lost in my own projects. I wanted to create a base mono behavior component that people could inherit from. I'm not a huge inheritance fan, but I thought, hey, instead of requiring people to deal with dependency injection and dealing with what happens if it's not available, I figured I'd create this class right here. So if you inherit from this class, you'll be able to send network requests, which that's good, I guess. And then you can implement something like this down here, where you, where you, uh, you know, you don't have to implement this interface. But I think in the future it'll be nice to have these marked with interface, either for metadata reasons or just if you move outside of Unity, where you can't just rig things up in an editor, it might become pretty useful. So this implements just a simple void send request and uh, I hooked that up through Unity events inside of the inspector. That's why it's void. So you just send the request, make a request, you have to give it a request type and this is optional in some cases but you do have to initialize the request message. You have to call this extension method so that protobuf serializes it first because this is like a container for a serialized message 
with an ID attached to it. And then you have to call this extension method I made called pack an envelope. So it puts it in an envelope, which gives it a little bit of header. The header is dealt with internally. You don't have to worry about it. Unlike, you know, other uh, projects you'll see, I, I try not to make the user do, or the user of the project, not the actual player of the game, the user deal with any of that stuff. So yeah, it's pretty simple. And then I also created this simple interface for a target of callback. So you can target it for a callback for a certain response types. I don't know if I constrain this to... Yeah, I did constrain it to responses, so this only works for responses. And so you get it here, you can check some stuff. You don't get the envelope it came in, but you do get the payload, which is all that really matters in most cases. So you can do some logging or if you want. And then here's this sort of design that I've got going for at least at least the UI related stuff, which is pretty much everything in Pokemon Go. I create uh, some Unity events and to serialize them to the inspector you have to you have to create an empty class mark it serializable so what I do is I I rig up uh, listeners in the editor so that I can say hey we received this play get player response and so there's not really a service that's like hey give me a player response I mean there are but the UI is never asking for it and so what happens is the UI just listens for changes I think that's a design that they use in other UI things but I don't know I don't really do UI so yeah that works and so that ends up going to in this case there's a new there's a new uh, CS proj right here and it goes to what's this player player response so we just we just send the player data in this case and you can create multiple events I'll show you an example like the inventory it's going to broadcast multiple of the chunks of data inside the response. Right now it just sends the player stats, but we'll go back to the profile, I guess. So then we go into, where is it, sending the player data. So I just have this observer that's sitting around, and uh, what it does is, I, it, it does the, basically the same thing, but it takes apart, I guess you could, I can't think of the word, plexing? No, I don't know what the word is. But basically it receives the the, uh, the protobuf class player data, which contains data about the player, and it slices it up, or at least that's the idea. It just sends the username right now, but the idea is it'll slice it up and it'll send out the relevant data. So let's see, what else could we have sent out that would have been useful? The avatar, uh, we could have built the avatar for both the in-game 3D model and also the 3D model portrait. We could have initialized some currencies in the profile, that, but we probably wouldn't want to do that because it's not open, but we could. We could set that up here. We could do the team. I don't really know what this team thing is. He's like, join a team or something? I don't know. How does this game even work? Who knows? I never played the thing. Uh, and yeah, that's about it, pretty much. I'm not going to deal with the tutorial. Definitely not. So yeah, that's that's the current design idea. It might change, but it's pretty decoupled. Uh, I think it works good with the UI. It lets people who don't want to code set things up. Unity events are really nice like that. You can sort of make like a fake br blueprint system using them. Really ugly blueprint system. I'm referencing the Unreal Engine 4 system for building things with a UI instead of code. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically it. I mean, you can look at this loading bar thing if you want. It's not that interesting. But most most of yesterday, I had to fix some internal bugs. I wrote some pretty bad things in. I'm, I'm going real. I'm trying to go really fast. Pokemon Go scene's going really fast. Don't have time to write unit tests. I really probably should have. I would have found these faults. The, this is exactly why I write unit tests for everything, because you find faults like this. It takes so long to fix. And... And there's still no unit test, which is just not good. And another issue, Unity is not really, doesn't lend itself well to unit testing. I created a project called Testity to try to address that. got pretty far. Unfinished. Just was taking too long. It's it's a crazy project, though. Whew. I can't believe it. I can't believe it even works a little bit. Anyway, that's Pokemon Go. I'll have some more to post maybe tomorrow or even tonight. And yeah, so that's where it's at right now. I'll keep releasing updates and I'll see where it goes.